7 o'clock, ladies and gentlemen, so let's um, start this uh, special meeting that we'll have tonight. Um, can I start by um, welcoming our new council, Mia, Mia Key. Hi. Um, welcome to Foxborough Borough Council. Um, I hope that you enjoy your time with us, I'm sure you will. Um, and um, not literally enjoy it. Welcome to, to us. Um, let's go on with the meeting then, ladies and gentlemen. Um, are there any apologies for absence? Uh, David Watts, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have apologies from Councillor Brian Moonwell and Councillor Jackie Williams. So thank you. Thank you. Any others? <coughs> yes, uh, uh, Councillor Brian General item number four, I think you have a paper in front of you, um, which shows the, uh, the new committee structure, uh, consequent to uh, the change in uh, membership of the, uh, of the council. And uh, so I don't do have someone who proposed that. I propose that we take a hand off. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any, anyone to speak on that? Brent, please. Hi. Thank you, sir. Um, Did, did, did everyone hear that? Yeah. Uh, on page three of the papers, um, the um, HS2 Talk Up Advisory Committee is listed twice. And apparently I'm told that the um, Graham tells us that the second one is the definitive version. It's just, I think it's a word process on the state. Any other comments on this? If not, can I show of hands to, to show your employer approval? Thank you very much indeed. <coughs> Agenda item number five, what is the motion? Um, who wants to speak to this first? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was led to believe that um, uh, a revised motion should be handed around to every member of the council. Thank you. It's, it's just about to be handed out. We'll wait for a moment to ask. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would just like to advise members that since um, a reference in relation to this matter has been made to the Standards uh, Assessment Committee, and it would not be appropriate for members to discuss the substance of that complaint, since that will be uh, considered uh, under that. So we'll adjourn for what, five minutes? Is that right? Are you filming the now? Yeah, because I, I, I was going to stop it, but I'd probably get accused of editing the video if I did that. Did you get any of our conversation? Because I'm not quite sure. No, it's right. I'm, not, it, it, I'm not quite sure it's, it's, it's right to put that out. Yeah, no. It, only what was when they said meeting adjourned and all that lot. Yeah, it's done that, but it's just I don't turn it off because if I do, I'm going to get accused. You know, David Grindle's already complaining yeah. to the Evening Post that I'm editing videos, That's so I don't fine. want to give him That's fine. I'm not, no, no, it's no, not. It's I'm not, not, it's not, it's not yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just I know saying that when there's an adjournment on, we had a Labour group meeting. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It's not even looking over there. I don't think it's there. appropriate to group meetings. It's not, it's not, it's not at all. It's just, it's just, it's just I know. It's just facing the middle and there's no one in the middle. I'm yeah. trying, you can come around and look if you want. No, it's okay. It's okay. I just wanted to give picture of it. I mean, yeah, nothing, no. there was nothing in that conversation. Yeah, yeah. Have you got a copy of that? Yeah, they've just brought it over to us. Yeah, No, not the one, my statement. Yeah. Uh, no, it isn't. No, they've not given us that. They've given us this. Oh, okay, thank That's you. That's embargoed until until I've read it. Okay. <laughs> Which is not. Yeah, well, it's not on there. So. Yeah, but you can have that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
say much more about that other than it has been fully investigated. But I consider the 
position of cabinet member to be a privileged position. When I had that role for four years, I was conscious of two things. It's important and it's honour is one thing. And the fact that my um, my um, uh, excuse me, allowance, councillor's allowance was more than double which represented what a privileged position I was holding. So that's how I highly, I hold that position as cabinet member. And I hope all councillors will support me in that. So what there is a portfolio holder and cabinet member which is in, under investigation. And as I've said, I cannot go any further into it. I'm not allowed to by law. However, I can say that I take exception to comments made by Councillor Radulovic, and I'm so sorry he's not here tonight to defend himself, but I have to raise the issue that in the Eastwood and Kimberley Advertiser of last week, front page headlines, he calls it party politics and self-expedience. I take great exception <coughs> to that. And I'll refer you to two words very important words that are in the motion. And those words are honesty and integrity. And it's in my opinion that honesty and integrity is paramount to this council. And himself, to his credit, Councillor Radulovic took himself out of the position when he was under investigation. And yet, a member of this council will not do so for the time it takes to carry out the investigation. That's all this motion is asking for, that he stands down and acts with honesty and integrity. Unfortunately, the rest of my deliberation has been cut short legally. So I cannot go any further at this point in time, but I just ask you to support this motion of no confidence uh, and, um, and leave it at that for the time being. And uh, obviously I, I believe I have the right to finish the debate. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Is there a second motion, please? Councillor Kerry. Do you want to speak now, Councillor Kerry? Um, Mr. Mayor, um, I will jointly propose uh, the motion and Okay, so we have a, a motion that's been proposed. Um, can I, are there any speakers to this motion? Uh, Councillor Barber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Dilovich does send his apologies. He is not a well man at the moment, and I'm sure we wish him the very best. He was at the hospital appointment this evening. He's hoping to come along later, and he has a, quite a, a major operation to get next week. So I'm sure that I can convey all your wishes and best wishes to him. Right. I'm speaking here as chair of the Labour Group. We met last night, and this is the statement which we wish to issue. I've issued a copies to the press embargoed until until I read it. Broxford Borough Council unanimously approved a procedure for investigating complaints about the behaviour of members of the council. That process involves reference to a standards committee and an appointed independent person. The motion before the council tonight ignores that procedure. I, uh, this was decided last night. Uh, I shall say that it doesn't ignore the procedure, but it, it, the previous one did. But it's uh, preempted the procedure, I think, we've met it. It seeks to make full council judge and jury on an individual member's conduct, throwing to the wind the normal rules of natural justice, turning matters of conduct into a politically motivated charade which can only bring the whole council into disrepute. The individual member will fully cooperate with the Standards Committee investigation. Meanwhile, whether or not he remains a portfolio holder is a matter for the appointed leader of the council to determine and him alone. The Labour Group will make no further comment on the matter until after the completion of the investigation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Steve Scott, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, fellow councillors, ladies and gentlemen. I take great exception uh, 
uh, to be in uh, lectures about party political shenanigans and what have you from the Labour Party. To be quite honest with you, and this is, as Kendrick Beer has already alluded to this, and don't forget, Councillor Barber, we Liberal Democrats are in partnership with you here in Rockstone, so I can't see that there's any party political shenanigans going on here. And all we are asking for in this motion is that Councillor Robinson is either suspended or stands down from his cabinet post until the standards, what used to be the standards board, reaches its conclusion. We're not saying what the conclusion should be and what it shouldn't be. What we're saying is that the cabinet member is such an important position in this council that if he did the right thing, as Councillor Radunovic did, when he was taken to court over the allegations to which he was found not guilty, he still took himself out of it. That's what Councillor Robinson should be doing. So all this talk of political motivation is absolute nonsense, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Carr. Anybody else? Uh, mm. Councillor Watts, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. <clears throat> I think it's worth uh, making clear from the outset what this motion is not. It is not a personal attack. And it's not a motion I think that anyone who takes any pleasure <coughs> in moving. But it's a recognition that this council is held in the highest regard by our population, by those who vote uh, for it. I get regular letters, as I'm sure other councillors do, from people saying how highly they value Rockstone Borough Council, how pleased they are with the work that we put in, and how often they write and say, thank goodness we're not in Nottingham, yeah, that we are a, a, a separate council. That reputation is built up over years. And it's built up by the work of all of the members doing the right thing and being seen to do the right thing. A representation like that can only be built over years, but it can be lost in an instant. Because there are many people who will say, oh yes, you're all up to no good, where as soon as an allegation is made. It's not a motion about the trap. It's not a motion about whether we should extend the line to Kimberley or whether we should even have a feasibility study into extending the line to Kimberley. It is simply a motion about what happens in the very short term. Councillor Robinson has referred himself to the Standards Board and that process will go through. It's not a motion that makes any judgment about whether Councillor Robinson is right <coughs> or is wrong in uh, his actions, nor indeed what those actions uh, were. What the motion is saying is that where a serious allegation has been made, it is proper for that member to step back from a portfolio post during the period of the investigation. There are many occasions where people who have done the right thing have found themselves on the wrong end of a complaint and have resigned. You can go back to the Fugo affair. Well, I can't follow the board then. Um, but those of you who are a bit older than me can. But we don't need to go that, that, that far. Floodgate. Andrew Mitchell resigned as the government chief whip over allegations of the wording he used to the police that he was subsequently cleared of. Subsequently showed not to do. Of course, he went too far by then trying to sue, ignoring the great legal maxim that stopped when you were ahead. Um, but he resigned from that. Councillor Vidulovic faced a most unpleasant allegation here two years ago. He stepped back during the course of that investigation. He was completely innocent. And in due course, the allegation against him was dropped. But he stepped back from the council to protect the integrity of the council so that people could see that whilst the investigation was going on into a serious matter, the person subject to the investigation was not taking part in important decisions. It's been said already what an important role a portfolio holder is. And to protect the integrity of this council, I genuinely believe that it is right that Councillor Robinson should step down at this point. That is no admission of guilt on his part. Nothing could be further than the truth. It's following the example set by Councillor Radunovic. It's following the example set by many others in the, uh, uh, the history of uh, politics. And it's 
it's not indeed a motion of no confidence. It's simply saying, whilst this investigation goes on, it is proper for Councillor Robinson to step back and for somebody else to take on his role. I, I genuinely cannot see anything objectionable about that at all. What we're asking Councillor Robinson to do is, to put it bluntly, to follow the example set by Councillor Radulovic. And that's the right way uh, to behave, and that is something that I hope very much he will take on. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers? Councillor Curry, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, this is not an easy thing to have to propose. It really is not. Um, we're all councillors, we have different political groups, we all get on. That's not an issue here. The issue is as clearly stated that it is a most honourable and morally right thing to do to either stand down or be removed whilst the investigation continues. Um, it's been well put that Councillor Rudovic has faced similar issues of action and acted, in my view, in a very, very <coughs> honourable way. We're not talking about individuals here, we're talking about the principles. And should that, should that, I think, very positive action result, that would in no way prejudice the standards assessment. It would in no way uh, affect the result of the work done by the standards assessment in reviewing this case. And Councillor Zulovic also has said in many, many times that, and in fact, as late as Tuesday this week, in cabinet that the Labour group have no whip in terms of any decision. So I think today what we are seeing really is a motion that tests the values of all Rockstone councillors. And your vote this evening will show everybody what you think about what should happen in these circumstances. So I would just really would like to say that everybody make good choice. But I certainly won't be supporting the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers, please? In which case, we'll go to the vote. Well, those in favour of the motion, please. Hey, so, sorry. Can I throw a record? Go ahead. Need to put the hand up. I'm sorry, I, 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 uh, I, I just assumed that um, I, 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 I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Ken, say, say your piece and then we'll move to the Lord's office. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Well, actually, I have nothing further to add. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the people that have spoken on behalf or I've got to be careful again with my words, most of the people that have spoken have spoken very sensibly, and I could not improve their words any better. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So we're moving to the report. Harvey? Four. Councillor Hepton-Saw. 
abstain. Councillor Key. Aye. Councillor Kerry. Aye. Councillor Tatmagin. Again. Councillor Marshall. Again. Councillor McGuckin. Again. Councillor McGrath. Again. Councillor Oates. Again. Councillor Owen is not here. Uh, Councillor Patrick. Again. Councillor Prince. Again. Councillor Whitby. All. Councillor Rob. Again. Councillor Robinson. I don't use the road. Councillor Rowland. All. Councillor Simpson. All. Councillor Tyler. All. Councillor Watts. All. Votes for, there were 13 votes against. Uh, there were, I can't control there was no abstention. There were two, there were two abstentions. Um, and so the uh, motion is carried. Thank you. We'll now move on to agenda item number six. Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, yeah, so I wanted to speak on this and I'm going to look at it mainly from the uh, regeneration and transport issues in the region. Um, as you're aware, I've chaired the Greater Consumer Joint Planning Advisory Board for a, a number of years now. 
during which time we got the aligned core strategy and we got eight authorities working together. And that was a big move. Um, when I first became a councillor, I remember asking the question, will the tram ever go to Long Eden? And the answer came back, not a chance, because that involves working with Nottingham City, Rochester Borough, Nottingham County, Derbyshire County, and Overwatch Pride Authority, so it won't happen. That is no longer true. It could happen, because the authorities are now talking to each other. That is what we've got to do in this area. Transport, Nottingham has won many, many awards to buses, light rail, heavy rail, cycling, everything. We've been in the top end of the league, Nottingham City. The trouble is that we've reached, or we're reaching, very, very quickly the geographical boundaries. The integrated ticket, the kangaroo ticket, stops at the Sherwin Arms in Attenborough. Greater Manchester's integrated ticket, the Greater Manchester Wayfarer ticket, stops at Ambergate, which is just the other side of Derby. That is there, that is the difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put your hands up if you've done it on a Greater Manchester ticket. Every day to Wigan. Right, okay, that aside. Manchester, Manchester, Liverpool, Sheffield, Leeds, and Newcastle, five of the core cities, all with their PTEs, all with their great transport infrastructures, are now going together as one item. That's the next generation on. If we do, if we, if we don't go as an integrated Greater Nottingham area, we're going to just not be left in the dark ages. We're going to be left in the prehistoric ages, as far as this is concerned. We've got to move forward. We all have reservations about what's offered to us. It's, as Pat says, it's the best that we're going to get. It's what's on offer at the moment. And a few points which are worth, worthy of note are that the government has said it's got to be Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire combined authorities. If one fails, the other fails. They're not interested in, in letting a Nottinghamshire one go without a Derbyshire or vice versa. Derbyshire, the D2 bit, are ahead of the Nottinghamshire, the N2 bit, in their process, where we're lagging behind. But we're catching up and we're moving. That is really good news for, for Grotstow, because, of course, we sit on the border between Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire. We've got to have the two authorities working together, and there will be what I do have reservations about is why is also involved in the Greater Nottingham one, if you like, and uh, you could say, say the workshop, Redford, and uh, East Midlands Airport isn't. I think there's surely far more to do with East Midlands Airport and Castle Donington than we're ever going to be to do with Glossop. Glossop has far more to do with Greater Manchester than it ever will be to do with Nottingham. So we are setting these, I think, on feudal boundaries. We should be setting them on modern travel to work. So that's my reservation, and I hope we go that way. But uh, just to sum up, if we don't go down this road on transport and on regeneration, I've got a strong suspicion that um, HS2, there's a good chance it might not even bother stopping at these buildings. It could just go straight through, through Toten without a stop. Now that would be a disaster for us, sure. We get all the disadvantages and not in the game. And uh, Sir, Sir David Higgins has made it quite clear that one north has to go ahead and it doesn't get the HS2 regeneration money up there. I think he's going to make it quite clear that if D2M2 don't put together these things, we're going to be left in the dark ages and right back. Please, 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 we've got to vote for this. We've got to go for it. And then once we've, once we've gone for it initially, it's not the all and end all. There's loads of uh, alterations and loads of enabling and all sorts of things going on to us. Let's work on that and let's work together. Uh, the, the eight authorities in the Great Nottingham area Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Steve. Councillor Tyler, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, fellow councillors. Uh, it's not just about railways, I hasten to add. And I would say, only once ever having attended this committee, <coughs> anything that requires <coughs> having that committee in existence is a good thing. And I admire Councillor Pat Lally for his endurance in attending these meetings. One of its merits is that it seemed to unite in complete anger all the councillors from every other borough. So hopefully this new model will, uh, will provide a voice for us because incidents 
that occur there, they seem to be very distant on the Economic Prosperity Committee from the people who actually work on the coal face. So it's got its faults. It's got uh, the implied, I think, um, danger of warning, if you wish, that changes are, are planned for the future of local government. But I think we have little choice but to accept this. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Charles, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm a believer in devolution. I think this is far too little and far too late. If you look at the size of the population of the area we're talking about, of the economic area, that's not English in Derbyshire, its actual population is greater than Northern Ireland. It's about time proper devolution took place in this country that we have levers of power down at local level and away from Whitehall because East Midlands is shouting out for this. I'm afraid this is maybe just another crime go. I think it's too little and too late. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, oh sorry. No, you left tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, Councillor, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the principle of uh, combining functions, I totally agree with. I always have. My beef tonight is that something has come to Council without examples and proposed practical details so we can all discuss. I would want more reassurance, Mr. Mayor, on how the democracy would survive. An idea of a head office for eight councils uh, is going to be difficult. It will be difficult for residents. An idea of a head office for eight boroughs or eight councils. My main worry is that, for example, a Rylander has a problem. Who to contact? Don't say a switchboard with 53 extensions, mm -hmm. pillar to post, and no sign of resolution. The local touch will be lost. It's important that locally, our people, our council staff, our officers, can carry on with their excellent work for the community in this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Brian. Lydia, please, please. Oh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, fellow councillors. Um, obviously, there's a lot of feeling in the council, there's a lot of excitement, and, and things are going to be, you know, acceptable. But the only thing that I, I must be honest with you all, I don't understand all of this, what it means, because I'm not, you know, just with what we have. But the only thing that came over to me loud and clear.
but frankly, it's rubbish. The speed at which this is being pushed through leaves an awful lot to be desired. And the so-called consultation that was carried out with the public was worse than useless. I did go onto the websites and uh, complete the form that referred to us as being Broxstone District Council, which on behalf of the authority I take great exception to. We are a borough, not a district. And, and frankly, the, the way the questions were worded was basically, we're going to do this, how much do you agree with us? A lot, an awful lot, or absolutely. That is not a proper consultation. Uh, and to suggest that it, 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 it was, um, uh, as clearly <coughs> somebody somewhere is thinking that this is good enough, it's not good enough. It, 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 it's really poor. There's nothing in the proposals that I can say about what, what happens if subsequently an, an authority decides to withdraw. You know, what if the new council is brought and decides we don't want to be part of it? What was signed up? How would we get out? The answer seems to be you can't. Yeah. But it's not actually there. I agree absolutely with what Councillor Ball uh, said. And, 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 but I got told off on Twitter last year for saying that Councillor Ball has got an MPE. Because maybe it could be the end. But uh, I, 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 I'm glad I'm not the only one who makes that mistake. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you remember? You said MPE. <laughs> then there will be no need to be a unitary authority. Because if we're already making uh, the big decisions, making things work, then why change it? Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I am concerned this is the first step on that sort of slope. The absolute lack of detail in the proposals is shocking. Because it's all been rushed through. I mean, there was the, um, uh, the, the draft um, uh, bill, well, actually, I've left it in my back, I don't want to get to that. Um, the, the draft plan, uh, statutory instrument, which I don't know if anyone's actually read, but I made a point on cabinet, they do seem to save money there by leaving out all the spaces yeah. between all of the letters awful. and all of the words. Yeah, it, 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 yeah proofreading is not there at all. It, 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 it's about got the team. But, it, you know, trying to even make sense of that doesn't tell you how it's going to work or what the practical implications of it are going to be. I agree that we don't just have a work between the rock and the hard place and down the <coughs> down the down on this. It is probably, on balance, better to be there to try and make it better than standing outside and just hoping that it will all work and that somehow we will benefit. So I do support it, but I have those huge, huge concerns, and I hope that we will get over one of the concerns uh, for the cost. The figures that are being banded about vary tremendously. Um, I saw in the City Council paper the figure of £650,000, and I'm assured by everyone who's been involved in this that that figure is utter nonsense. It would be far less than that. But find out what the accurate figure is. I think the other answer is nobody has a clue. Uh, and again, we're, we're, we will have to monitor this very carefully mm. as an authority. We will have to be very close to it to make sure that it doesn't evolve into something big and nasty that's going to swallow us all up and, and, and swallow up all of our money. So, with a heavy heart, I do support it. Thank you very much. Paul Simpson, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor, fellow councillors. Uh, like Councillor Watts before me, who said that uh, Councillor Carr had said what he was going to say, I think most of mine has now been said by Councillor Carr and Councillor Watts. I too have great reservations about this, particularly in the lack of accountability and the, there's just too many unknowns in it. But equally, I can see some advantages going forward. And I have almost reluctantly come to the conclusion that we're damned if we're going to it, and we're damned even worse if we stay out of it, which is not really a, an ideal scenario for entering into anything. <coughs> but I think reluctantly 
I shall vote for going into the combined authority. Thank you. Thank you. Nick Brown, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I will be brief, which has been said very eloquently by my members. And I have to say that it's difficult which side to fall on. Thanks for the brief. Well, and, and Lydia, with their love for this district, I have to say, members around, uh, around this chamber work very hard for this council. They're not always prominent, but if they're in the background, doing things, saying things, or working things out for Bradford, because we need to it. I have said in this chamber on previous occasions, Nottingham City Council cannot wait to get its hands on these and paper things. And I think we're seeing now that this net will be bigger. I uh, will be working on it, as members have said, who knows. And I am very wary about this, like other members have said, where the funding is going to come from, will it be unlimited? Look at the what, what came in in Nottingham was the workplace parking levy. Rest assured that will be at least in the children before we know where we are. Will it be in Kimberley? Will it be in Eastwood? Who knows? And it doesn't stop 250 quid or whatever it stopped at that. You can see now it's gone up and shot up to the tremendous. The people are very concerned. Where does all this stop? Uh, and then surely electorate, the, the electorate themselves, they, they've every right to ask. If this could be another level of government that it would be out of control. I mean, people have said about remoteness. I have to say <coughs> very often about the county council. <coughs> and there are people in this county council who will live within only a few miles of Doncaster, of Lincoln. What do they know about Beeston and Chilworth and Eastwood? And I do find it difficult sometimes that they have some input. But similarly, what do we know? about Bradford and, and uh, far north of this county. It's one heck of a distance. And I think if we expand this to go on greater districts, which it's going to be, it will be. What will it be controlled? I don't know. And as I said earlier, where will this new edifice be built? How big will it be? Because rest assured, like Europe, they'll want one. But I'm, I'm quite willing to, to listen and consider any of the perceived advantages. Uh, and I do think there's a long way to go. My fear is also that, that it's said previously, that it does seem to be a bit of a rush. Now, I would like that, that all council, every to have a lot more time to consider it. With that said, I'll stick to my stance, which was on cabinet, and I shall have state, because I have to say, both sides, I can't make one or the other out of it yet. But uh, I'm willing to listen but, uh, tonight. Mr. Mayor, I will have state. Thank you. Councillor Mina Key, please. Thank you, Mayor. I think, as with most things in life, I can see the benefits of cooperating together and um, pooling our resources in order to have more clout. But I'm really concerned that we're being asked to vote on something that we really don't have the details of. Um, not the least that it's essentially a blank check scenario that we have no clue as to what the possible cost implications are. And the decisions that it's responsible for, would possibly be responsible for, have huge, wide-ranging um, impact on us. Um, for example, transport, um, we can see it quite visibly with the impact on Beeston with the tram. Um, but also um, the work parking levy has been mentioned before, which is quite clearly affecting businesses in Nottinghamshire. Um, not least that it's resulted in the loss of some businesses um, to other areas. And I think they're huge decisions. Um, and we're essentially devolving powers for them to a body, the makeup of which we don't, we're not sure about, the future remit of which we're not sure about, and even the cost of which we haven't got a clue of. So um, I think it's really worrying that also we don't quite know how we'd get back out of it if we thought it wasn't good for the borough. Um, and Councillor Carr made a really good point about the consultation, because it's quite clear that even avid users of social media haven't actually really heard about it, um, and so I don't know how people who don't use social media would even have a clue that it was going on, and it's such a huge decision. I don't understand why it hasn't been widely publicised, and there's massive consultation, and it worries me greatly that it's going to affect everybody around here, but people just don't know about it. Thank you. Um, Councillor Grindle, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillors uh, and guests. <coughs> this is a very important time for Roxburgh Borough Council. Firstly, the 
rise and the fall of the Roman Empire, and here we come to rise and the fall of the Borough Council eventually. I think that will happen. But we have to remember some things here that's going on now. We've always been on this council to protect jobs. Very important. Who knows what's going to happen? Secondly, obviously, as well as apprenticeships. And then, of course, we have to look at the financial implications. We have to look at the Greenbelt implications and the massive housing implications that could be. Now, if the authority eventually decides in five or ten years to come this way and start building everywhere, um, we do have a problem. Now, this council and the hard workers within the council, and I'm including councillors as well, that some of the council administration staff will have twice as much work to do. Remember that. They are going to have to work extra hard. Uh, I don't know if they're getting more pay for it, but they'll have to work extra hard to help put this in, in, in vacation. So we have to remember that everything that you in this chamber, you can to have done here, right, is only the base of what may be something bigger to come. Now, I sat down two or three nights ago and I looked at everything I could regarding this <coughs> possible proposal. I have to make a decision tonight. I looked at it and I thought, oh no, we're not, playing. we're not playing this game. We're certainly not going to carry on like this. But you see, the future carries on. Things don't stand still long. The Roman Empire didn't last long. Brock came to last probably a little bit longer, but I'm not sure. Uh, but, Mr. Mayor, uh, I hope that every cancer in this chamber tonight votes for it, because if you don't, you will not. You will not get anywhere at all, we'll get nothing. We will land up being swallowed up quicker than slipping on a banana skin. So, I would suggest that every cancer votes tonight, yes, and I hope that first class stamp goes on that letter because <coughs> it has to be in my next Friday. Thank you. Call your hands, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Fellow councillors and members of the public. <coughs> Tonight it's a really good Catch-22 situation, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Do we? Don't we? And it's very difficult. As I said when I came to the briefing session on this, I hope this wasn't just a knee-jerk reaction and watered down devolution for us in England in response to uh, the vote to be taken in Scotland. However, I've always thought it was time we had joined up thinking on certain things. We ought to have joined up thinking on public transport, joined up thinking on attracting industry and businesses into the area. And maybe this is the way forward and we've got to go down that road. But I'm not too keen, as others have said, on the title. Combined authority implies that we've all been combined together to form this new authority and we have lost our personal identities. You know, perhaps united is better because that implies we're still here, but we're joined together in working together. But the devil is in the detail and unfortunately this has been rushed through without us being given that detail and not only people here within this chamber, but other authorities who've taken this vote must actually feel the same. We're not sure because we don't have the detail. But maybe we do have to trust that we can work together and make this area better, and that we do have the common sense to prevent this becoming yet another tier of government that is going to cost people money annually when the round comes in and you don't end up with the county council, the borough council, your parish council, and this whatever authority it ends up being called. Because I think that will be the biggest issue in people's minds when they read about this. <laughs> Is this going to cost us more? Is there going to be a new tier? And I think that's quite a reasonable fear that we should all have. 
that maybe we've got to work together and make sure that doesn't happen, that we retain our local identity whilst working for the bigger things and having our say on things that perhaps would be the city's domain or the county's domain and joining in with that. And we've been very good in England at drawing lines on maps all over the world that haven't worked. Maybe the time is to look forward and make this work for us and for our people. So I will support it tonight, but I do have great reservations about the devil in the detail. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm going to talk rather anecdotally, um, but it may help those that sit in limbo, which I can understand. Um, I, for one, personally, um, do not look forward to full council meetings at County Hall, uh, and I'm advised by our Chief Exec I'm not on my own, but that's another story. However, a minor miracle took place at our last full council meeting, because we had an excellent debate on this very issue, <coughs> as we've had tonight. And I think you should all be proud of what you've said, because everything you've said is quite pertinent. So I, I think you deserve um, an accolade for that. I will say that did, uh, that did come out of the debate at County Hall was that for sure, if the Scottish if the Scottish people had voted for devolution, we wouldn't be discussing this tonight. It's a soft. And, that, and that's all it is. We're told it's big money, but I don't think we've actually seen a figure. And I went from one side to the other, listening to the speaker after speaker, for and against. And I will say, and I say this with honesty, I took my eye off the ball. I didn't know if the Labour group um, had a free hand but the Conservatives had a free hand, the Liberal Democrats had a free hand, and the Independents had a free hand. So I'm not playing political mischief. I'm not quite sure if the Labour group did or didn't. Um, but, and, and I actually made my decision, decision on the very last speaker. And I flipped four. I, mean, and I, I think I changed my mind six times during the debate. Um, but one thing I think, as I understand it, and I'm looking at the head table, and I'll get a, a or a no, get a no. If you think it's for little divvying out for each district council, you're wrong. Uh, it's more for the common well-being and for all of us. So if I might say, it's something I've just dreamt of, it's nothing, nothing I've heard, so I don't want to be repeating in the press. For instance, this is just an example. If it was thought that a new a fourth bridge across the Trent with, uh, with its associated roads would be beneficial for the whole of the county and the city, that's where the money would go. Little pockets of money will not be divvied out to individual district councils. It's for big schemes and it's for the benefit of everybody. Whether that works or not, well, who, will, who knows? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Kev. Councillor Kerry, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, fellow councillors. I'm not going to repeat what has been said, but I think there's one, one item on, on the report today that hasn't really been mentioned very strongly is the section 4.2, which is housing. And I'm nervous about that because we're a very good authority in terms of housing. We're, we're our own, uh, owners of our own stock and we're investing in housing for ourselves. But we don't want to lose control of what we're doing in, in, in Broxton. And we've already lost some of the control about housing and building in our authority through the Align Core strategy. So I'm just wondering, can we be able to advise me as to the implications there is for housing in, in, in Broxton? In terms of the overall strategic importance of this command, whatever we want to call it, Manchester has been the forum of many, many things um, the Greater Manchester area. <coughs> they have a Greater Manchester Combined Authority, they have a, a LEP, they also have a Transport Executive. And I believe that they have attracted something like £15 billion pounds in that area to be spent over the next five year period because of the way they have come together um, and work together. There is a big difference, however, between Greater Manchester 
and Nottingham and Derbyshire. They are a metropolitan set of authorities. They're a big conurbation. They're all very, very similar. Nottingham and Derbyshire are not similar across that great expanse of space, ge geographical area. We have urban areas, we have semi-urban areas, we have rural areas. So how that's going to work in ensuring that everybody, every resident and every member of the electorate within the whole of that area gets a fair share of these resources, for me, is a very difficult question. So I'm, I really am hoping that this will bring prosperity and money to, to our area uh, through the combined authority helping the left to, to deliver that um, investment. But I'm very nervous about housing. I'm also very nervous about transport too. Um, we know that we've had transport issues. Um, the 8453, for example, was something that could have been done many, many years ago should there have been something like this taking money. The Conservative County Council had to put their hands in the pocket for £20 million pounds to make that happen, and it will make a big difference, not just to the county, to the county's money, but to the city. So I really do want to welcome this, and I think I'm going to support it, but I'm very nervous about the open check, the open book for money. We've got to be very careful. I think we need to put in nothing but strong terms to the chief executive and the leader who in the second part of the recommendation that we're going to allow to submit in these documents. Uh, I really, really am nervous about that, but I think overall it should be a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Please, Graham. <coughs> Just very, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Just very briefly, really, I've, I've listened to what's been said, and um, I will support it, but I must admit, Quite simply, I feel like a turkey voting for Christmas. Thank you. I don't see anybody else. So, Deputy Leader. <coughs> so. uh, thank you. Uh, it's been very informative, very good to, to, to listen to you all. I, I, I have been involved for quite some time uh, in, in the sort of discussions around this, starting from the, I mean, we, we formed first an economic prosperity committee. Tag something onto the end, uh, the chief executive to uh, <laughs> in brackets. <coughs> but, but, but they are actually more by, by, by legal, legal statutes. Um, and that's unfortunately what it said on the top of it. Um, right, so, so I'm, I made many, many notes. You'll, you'll excuse me. I, I suppose I'm a little unprepared tonight because I wasn't quite sure whether the hand was coming or not. I only, only discovered it 10 minutes before the meeting. I think there is, there is a, a, a lot of misconception, an understandable misconception as well, um, uh, uh, within within the chamber. I mean, this this the combined authorities were under discussion uh, pr prior to the Scottish vote, certainly, and, and well prior to, to much of the debate about the, the Scottish vote as well, because it was recognised that it's something that, that may have may be needed. strategic function. It does not take any individual powers away from the councils at all. Now, the, the, there is a school of thought in here that this actually removes any need to consider uh, rejigging local governments because they will be working together in a strategic fashion anyway. So it's pointless trying to uh, perform new unitary authority. So, I mean, that's been a debate that's been going on for some time. And, and this will actually take, take the steam out of it because so this will look after the strategic uh, uh, aspirations of, of an area and across that bit of the world and do it again. But, um, you, you, Bob, you, you, you mentioned uh, you know, not, not the gill. Uh, I mean, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll be around a two million people more, won't we? But this actually will form a structure, and this is within the in the thoughts of, of, of the, the uh, Economic Prosperity Committee, that we can actually cross borders then with that structure. Why shouldn't we be talking to work uh, further uh, and such like who, who, you know, together we could create a tremendous uh, house, really. So, so you know, this, this, isn't, 
this isn't the, the, the end. This actually sets us up for, for more. Um, the, 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 the left is, the left lens plan, part is it was set up in, in the wake of the dissolution of the regional development agencies, and, and it has proved to be inadequate, and I think uh, actually the members of the left realise that it is, to a degree, in, inadequate. Uh, it's it's under-resourced, and it, it, it desperately needs the, the, the knowledge of, of local councils uh, to, to input into it. Now, we, we're talking here about tens and tens and hundreds of millions of pounds of European funding and growth funding. So, so these are very, very serious decisions that we, we need to be involved in, in making. It really is important the economic development of Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire. We, we need to be there, we need to be at the table. Uh, the, at the moment with the left, there is there is no democracy. The left, this this is what we were reunited in anger. We, we, we made recommendations as as as, as joint councils, which were totally ignored by the private members who sit on the on the board of the left. There is only one representative from the district council on the left, which is totally inadequate as far as we're, we're concerned. The, the combined authority, the structure is suggesting that there will be one member, one vote. That, that means county and city have one vote each, and each district, each of the seven districts, have one vote each as well, which actually gives us a lot of say in, uh, in, in local decision making at this level. The member that you send to that uh, committee, the fine authority, Julie the leader, but it can be another, designated, will be accountable to the, count to, to the council. Have to come back here and, and face the music and also bring back uh, proposals, I think, for, for discussion. And one of the uh, um, safety aspects of, of the my authority is that decisions on many subjects, many subjects that have to be discussed, and one of them may well be housing and agreed upon. Decisions have to have a unanimous vote, otherwise they can't be carried through. Now, the, as far as I, can, I know, the Conservative and Labour parties have made a, uh, the National Party have made a commitment to the combined uh, authority. They see this as the way forward. Yeah, I'm not sure about you, Kimbar, but that's how we don't have to set anybody's there. I don't know. So, um, so, I don't know. So, I don't know. So, I don't know. So, I don't know. So, I do wish Steve hadn't mentioned trams as you like it. Workplace levies, that, that's, that's a city issue. I, I can't see us all joining together and saying let's, let's put a workplace charging levy in, in one of the districts or whatever. I really can't see that happening. And also mentioning a fourth bridge uh, uh, across the fence upsets as many people as, uh, as, as it pleases. As, you know, lovely but not not near, please. So, so that that's, that doesn't add to the debate at the minute, I think. But I think this this does, in fact, it, it re reinforces. Please, I, I asked you to. I'm a little bit more enthusiastic about this than that, maybe. Uh, but I, I do ask you to, to, to vote in favour of this. Let's, let's try it out. Let's not leave ourselves disenfranchised. It, it really reinforces what we do already, which we, we attempt to work together. And it's amazing how we, we do work together quite well. And we really need to carry this on. Combined work for the benefit of us all. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, so, um, we, we come to the vote, um, and basically we're voting to um, reaffirm, to affirm <coughs> the recommendations that's come uh, down to us from, uh, from Calvin. Uh, as set out on page eight and page <coughs> So, 
Those in favor of this proposal, please, will raise your hand. Please keep them raised and we'll count them. Okay, thank you. And those who are against, please, now. Well, that's clearly carried. Um, so, thank you very much indeed for um, a good debate. Much appreciated. So, we move to uh, the final. Thank you.